Welcome RTA Champions, this is the RTA Champion and this is day 6 of your masterclass to becoming a Jedi in Power Automate Desktop. Now in today's class we are going to be looking at loops, all kinds of different loops. We learn how to create a basic flow, we learn how to create variables. Now the next thing that we need to do is repetition, repetitive tasks. Now that is one of the main advantages of using robots is having the ability to repeat different actions. Now, with loops, we can do these things. Now, in this video, we are going to be looking at basic loops. We are going to be looking at loop condition, and then we are also going to be looking at the for each loop. Now, let's start with the most simplest of all loops, a simple loop. Now, you can access the loops and you can uh, add them to your flows from the actions pane. By opening the loops, you can see all the different loops that are available. I have already added all the different loops to save us some time so that we can go through them and see the different functionality. Now, once you add a loop, this is what the loop looks like. Now, the basic loop asks you for a start, an end, and an increment by. This is basically going to do a certain action five times. So it is going to start from zero, it is going to go to five, and it's going to increment by one. So let's say we want to do a certain action we would want to do it exactly five times, we would use a simple loop or just a loop. So in this example, we have a new variable. So we set a variable. We set this variable to 10. And then we are going to increment this variable inside of the loop. We are going to increment this variable by another variable. So new variable 2. And new variable 2 is going to be this same variable. So what we are going to do is we're going to do 10 plus 10. And we're going to save it in the same in the same variable and then we're going to do 20 plus 10 and so on and so on and so on so this is let's see how this is going to work so i will add a breakpoint here and let's run this process a process with a simple loop so as you can see it's a looping through the different steps it is also remember that here is where we see our different variables so we can see that uh, the different variables how they got updated so the new variable this is the one that we set initially is 10 and the new variable uh, outcome the one that we are setting inside of the loop is set to 60. why to 60 because we are adding 10 every time this uh, this loop goes through so every time this loop completes and this loop is going to complete five times starting from zero so it's going to complete exactly five times with an increment of one, we're going to do 10 plus 10, and then add another 10 to the 20, and so on, until we reach 50, until we reach 60, excuse me. So, or until we have done this five times. So this is what a basic loop looks like. Uh, you can use this whenever you would like to do something, or a repetition, but you know exactly the number of times that you would like to repeat this repetition. All right, let's move on and let's learn about the loop condition. Now, a loop condition is something uh, very useful. So let's say that you would like to execute a loop only when a certain condition is true. So in this example, we have a loop condition. We have added a loop condition from the loops and we have decided that the first operator, meaning uh, the first part of our equation, is going to be the new variable. So in our case, it's going to be 60, if you can't remember. So if 60 is smaller or equal than 10, then do this loop. So if this condition is true, only then execute what is inside of this loop. And inside of this loop, we are going to add one to our variable. So we're going to add one until this condition is not true anymore. And that's when the loop is not going to we're going to go out of the loop. So I hope that is clear. And this is, uh, let's execute this then from the beginning. So let's see the first part. So we need we need the first part so that we can get some values inside of our new variable. So we get the message. The message said 60. So let's do the second part. We can see that it's incrementing by 1 until it reaches 71. And yeah, the loop has, uh, the process has continued on to the other part. Uh, well, let's just let let's just stop it and let's move to the next part. The next part is a very interesting part because we're going to be 
seeing the for each loop. The for each loop is very useful because it's going to allow you to iterate through lists and, uh, and objects and uh, data tables. So let's say you have a data table in Excel or you have a list that contains different values. So for example, in this example, we are retrieving all of the files that we have in a folder. We are gonna go through all of the files in our folder. We're gonna find the file that is a PDF and we're gonna move that file outside of that folder. So let's see how we can do something like that. So we would add the get files in folder and we would get all of the files inside of my pictures folder. Once I get all of the files, I would add a for each loop inside of the for each loop. The for each loop is going to create, pay attention to this, is going to create the current item. Now the current item is going to hold all the information of, in, in my example here, of the files. So if I go here to the current item and I see the details of my variable, and remember we have seen this in the previous masterclass in greater detail, so I can see that I have the property here that I can or different properties that I can access from this file. So in my example, I want to access the extension property. So I want to check if this file has is a PDF. And if it's a PDF, I'm going to move it out of this folder inside of another folder. So, excellent. So let's add a condition. So we just add a simple condition, an if condition. And let's see what is inside of the if condition. So inside of the if condition, the first operator, meaning uh, what is the first part of the equation, is the current item. So remember the current item and dot the extension, which is the property. So I'm accessing right now what is the extension of this file and does it contain PDF? So dot PDF. So just as a reminder for everybody, if we go here, and we go to view, we can see dot extension is the property and dot png that is exactly the value. So I imagine for the PDF is going to be dot PDF. And that is why we put dot PDF here and we have contains. We have also many other different operators that we can use for our loop conditions. So let's cancel this or save it, it doesn't matter. So and then inside we have just a simple action that is going to take the current item that I'm working on so the current file that I'm looping through and it's going to move it inside of the new folder. And that is everything that there is to it. So let's, let's see the folder. So this is, we have a PDF file here and we have a bunch of images. And then we have a folder called camera roll. So that is where we are going to move our, uh, that is where we're going to move our PDF file. Now, if we run our process from right here so that we don't have to do the other part and let's see what happens. So it has the pictures, it is looping through the different things. It has stopped inside of this if condition. It has displayed the message. Let's move the message over here. File move successful. And then it is going to skip every single other time all of the other files and it's going to finish the loop because there is no more other PDF documents. Now, if we check inside of here, there is no more PDF document. The PDF document has been moved here. Yeah, that's how you do it. This is how you do it. Now, loops are great, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that this video was informative. This is a very important part of creating your processes, and I invite you to create your own processes by yourself. Now, before closing, I want to ask you a question. I have a question that I want to ask you and to see that if you have been understanding. Uh, what I've been saying so far. So the question is, if the number of repetition is known in advance, which type of loop should be used? Loop condition, loop for each, any of the above? Well, you tell me the answer. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you have uh, learned something in this video and I will see you in day seven of Masterclass.